Hello, how are you? It's Dean, and uh, welcome to the channel. Of course, this is uh, this channel is focused on progressive rock, uh, guitar lessons, reacts, gear reviews as well. And anyway, so today I'm doing a react. This is a request by a brand new Patreon. Thank you, Fletcher, for joining the Wolf Pack. Uh, he's a new he's the newest Patreon. If you're interested, look at the link below in the description box. Hey, Dean, I'm new to the Patreon thing. Great. Uh, yeah, just keep on replying the way you did. That was fine. Hoping you can squeeze in a reaction slash analysis to the moments in between by the reign of Kindo. In my opinion, they're one of the most talented and least known prog bands around. No one does what they do, and they're a breath of fresh air on the prog scene. So I look forward to this very much. Let's react.
Wow. They have a real clean sound. Like, I was listening to it, and I'm thinking, it sounds like the uh, the comp main composer was probably the, the keyboard player, the piano player. Kind of set the tone for the song. It, s it started off... Um, it reminded me of a few different things. First of all, I thought my brother would like it. Greg, you watching? I thought I bet you'd like this band. They kind of remind me a little like like Tears for Fears and Talk Talk. I think yeah, I got a Talk Talk album up here right now. The vocal reminded me a little of Talk Talk when he was starting off. The composition and the the, the skill of songwriting, which is pretty, I would say, advanced. They, they're advanced songwriters. It's above your typical. Uh, well, it's well above your typical top 40 radio or top 40 whatever nowadays. Jeez, top 40 radio, do we even use that term nowadays? Do people listen to radios that much? I mean, obviously in the car, it's now it's like Spotify top 40s. Like, Also, they reminded me of the band The Deer Hunter, which is a band that I've been learning about as I've been reacting. The production was really nice. It was really, like I say, very clean, nicely recorded, nicely compressed. It's all the geeky stuff to say. I thought they did a good job on the drums and the whole song sounded nice and it sounded nice and cohesive. They did remind me a little of Radiohead as well, a little bit of vibe from Radiohead, their kind of songwriting and then and the singing. And I was actually surprised, you know, his singing started off very quiet and subtle, and then he really was belting it out uh, by the middle of the song, which actually really did surprise me. I thought I'd heard, oh, that's probably the loudest he's going to be singing, but all of a sudden he 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 went up a notch to 11 or whatever, and his vocals just, Wah! the harmonies really stood out to me when, when uh, there was only, I think, just the one backup harmony. I don't think there was like a triple harmony or anything. It was like really accentuated nicely the song. Uh, you know, a little bit almost uh, the, the hair at the back of your neck kind of standing like, whoa. That. Yeah, Tasteful is another way for sure to describe this band. They're, they're very, it's kind of a slick production, very deep songwriting, I would say, or composition. Uh, the lyrics, once again, I've said this over and over again. I'm not, I'm not a lyric head. Sometimes I do get into the lyrics of songs, especially if there's a theme. You know, I didn't even really pay it too much attention just because I'm a music head more than a lyric head. So I won't touch on the lyrics much. The other thing I almost forgot to say is that the song started off almost, it reminded me of Pat Metheny slash Lyle Mays. He's one of the great keyboard players of ever. It's jazz. That's jazz fusion. And I love this opening part when the song is just starting out. Nice, beautiful, clean guitar. And, and the drums are kind of softly building up. There's kind of a shuffly feel going on. And the bass line... Do, 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 do. See, we got minor chord there. Minor chord. Doesn't he sound like uh, the Muse singer a bit there, actually? When he was just going... Oh, that's really cool. When I go... Gorgeous. Uh, there's a technical name for chords when you just kind of turn in, turn them in like that. Like that to me, that's like um, the police. Every breath you take, um, Andy Summers really exploded that kind of chord use. You know. And here, you hear his, his singing just sort of, uh, he just goes over the moon all of a sudden, blowing your hair back. <laughs> uh, pretty timeless. It does have a bit of a fresher, modern sound to it. Especially in these sections here. Sort of just working with single notes, you know. Really enjoy the drums in this song and the drum and the, and the bass. Uh, the bass is playing very much in in uh, harmony with the song. He's not uh, overly aggressive and sort of standing out, which which uh, which is a characteristic you see in a lot of more pro classical prog, where the the bass is really driving the song. But he's a little bit busier in this part. Do, 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 do. 
And this song, wow, this is the only song I've heard by this band, so I'll have to hear more. What do you think of the song? I'm curious what you are all thinking of the song, especially if it's new to you, like it's new to me. What do you think of this band? So thanks again for my new Patreon supporter, Joshua. Thank you to all my Patreons. You all are awesome. Uh, the Wolf Pack is certainly something I am in awe of every day. I, I, I love, um, and we're like a family. We're a family. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. We'll talk to you in the next video. Spiraling on his Dean. Bye.